Hi everyone, my name is Katie Wytichek. I'm with Washtenaw County Water Resources Commissioner's Office. And today I'm gonna to talk about stormwater management, water quality, rain gardens, and then I'm gonna teach you how to place a rain garden at your site. We'll start at Ipsy Community High School. I was out there today, a beautiful sunny day. Uh, but on a rainy day, what you would see is all the rain landing on the building, the sidewalks, the driveway, and of course the parking lot. And one of the biggest problems that we have with keeping our rivers, our creeks and our lakes clean is all the stormwater ends up flowing directly into our storm drains and whatever was on the landscape, whatever was on in the driveways or the parking lots ends up getting washed directly down that storm drain. So oftentimes, um, there's a little bit of oil leaking from your car, or maybe there's some brake dust or some particles from your um, tires. There's always leaves and trash, and sometimes there's fertilizers or pesticides that people put on their lawn. All these little things that are on our landscape, they get washed directly into the storm drain, and then they go into our rivers and our creeks, and they are not filtered. Um, so that's the biggest source of pollution in our rivers today. Of course, water also will land on our rooftops. And here at Ipsy Community High School, the water just runs straight off of the rooftops um, and it will drain to the lowest point, which on our campus here is the soccer field. And then just beyond the soccer field, there is a creek. Um, so that creek is capturing all the stormwater that lands on the school's building, parking lots, and fields. And um, often that water is not only polluted, but it also is moving really fast. So you can see here at the top of the hill, we do have some trees, but now going down the hill, it's just all turf grass. And the water ends up moving really fast as it goes down this slope. And then it goes directly into a storm drain, which again leads, leads into that creek. Now, really fast moving water will end up causing erosion on the sides of the banks of a stream. And when that um, dirt is eroded, then you just have loose dirt moving down the stream and that causes high turbidity. Our loose dirt also has phosphorus within it. There's naturally occurring phosphorus in our soil. So when dirt is loose and moving through the water, then you end up with high amounts of phosphorus in our water. And that can cause algae blooms farther downstream, um, which means that there's not enough oxygen in the water um, because of that algae bloom. And then our fish don't have enough oxygen to breathe. Um, so what happens here on the campus has big impacts farther downstream. Now, just looking again right here at the edge of the building, we have this big slope of our roof, all the water when it rains comes straight down and you probably have seen puddling if you've ever been out here on a rainy day, puddling right here along the sidewalk and then the water continues on and often there's big puddles in the soccer field. Sometimes you can't even play soccer out there. Um, so this is another problem with stormwater management. Sometimes we have puddles where we don't want them to be. And sometimes um, we have polluted water going into our creeks and rivers. Now a solution to both of those things is to put in a rain garden. So a rain garden is just a small garden that is sunken down and it captures stormwater from the surrounding area. And water will flow into this garden. So here's one right here. Water flows in from the roof and from the uphill area. And then the water is slowed down as it sits in this garden. And then it slowly soaks down into the ground where it naturally gets filtered clean. So there's tiny microorganisms in the soil that will actually filter out any of the phosphorus or dirt that might be moving around in the water. Um, in some cases, the microorganisms will eat up that pollution and then the water is able to go out clean. So it's pretty cool how it works. Um, these native plants, the garden are full of native plants and the native plants help to absorb and use up some of that water to help them grow. And then of course, some of the water um, evaporates out and evapotranspirates out from the plants. 
So um, we're using a more natural system to capture some of that stormwater, put the, put the water in a one place so that it isn't flooding out our soccer fields or our sidewalks. And then also we're cleaning up the water because the water can soak down through the ground and get clean. So here we are on the campus. Um, and I want you now to think about, well, what if we wanted to build another rain garden? So here's our second rain garden. Those were built just two years ago by um, students. And we want to build another garden because we still have water pooling on our soccer fields. We want to capture more of the water from the building. And um, so we have to think about, well, where should the garden go? Um, so, of course, you could build a garden all the way out here at the bottom of this big slope to try to capture some of the water before it ends up on the soccer field. We also could try to capture the water coming off of the building. But one thing that we need to think about when placing a rain garden is that our garden needs to be at least um, 10 feet away from a building, so we couldn't put it too close to our building, but luckily we have sidewalk all around, so we're never going to be able to get too close. And we also need to be at least within 100 feet of a water spigot. So that's really our limiting factor here at Ipsy High School. There's lots of places where we could put a rain garden to try to capture that water before it gets into our soccer field. But we need to be within 100 feet of a water spigot, which is right over here where um, where my cursor is pointing. There's some bike racks over there. So <clears throat> if we were to build a rain garden, it would need to be somewhere in this area where we could drag a hose from this water spigot out so that we could actually water the garden. Um, another thing to consider when placing a rain garden is it needs to be outside of drip line of a tree. So you can see this really well this time of year. The branches come out to about here on this tree. So our rain garden needs to be just outside of where those branches are. If you build a rain garden too close to the bottom of a tree, the tree all of a sudden might be sitting in a puddle of water and it's not gonna be happy with that. So the, when you're considering where to put a rain garden, you wanna be at least 10 feet away from a building so that you aren't putting a puddle right next to your building foundation. That can, of course, damage the foundation. You need to be outside of the drip line of a tree, so outside of where the branches are coming down. And you need to be um, about 100 feet away from a spigot so that you can water the plants when they're first getting established. Now, since these are native plants, once your plants are established, so after the first year, you don't need to water anymore. Um, so those are the things to consider when placing your rain garden. And you, um, if you're doing this as a lesson, you'll receive a worksheet that shows you an aerial image. So looking down from the site from above, and you can choose um, where to put your rain garden, thinking about all of those different factors. So thank you so much. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson. <laughs>